All right, good morning. The uh, court is going to take up the uh, next case on the court docket. This is uh, cause number C210011 CPS in the interest of Jasper Cole Ramby, a child. The uh, case is set for an initial permanency hearing, and the hearing is being conducted pursuant to emergency orders of the Texas Supreme Court via Zoom video conference. Participating in the hearing today on behalf of the, the department is uh, caseworker Brendan Ziders, Supervisor Isabella Reyes, and uh, Regional Attorney Deborah Keenum. The uh, mother of the uh, child is Rebecca Ramby, and I'll verify in a moment whether Ms. Ramby is uh, participating in the hearing. Andrew Graves is her court-appointed court attorney, and Mr. Graves has advised the court he is uh, currently tied up in criminal court and will not be able to participate in the hearing today, and I'll address that in a moment. The uh, father of the child is Jeff Manny, and he is participating in the hearing today, pro se. The attorney and guardian ad litem for the uh, child is Madeline Smith, and Ms. Smith is participating in the hearing today. I also show on my screen uh, Sky Braden, who I believe is a foster parent caregiver for the child. I also show uh, Christy Callahan. Ms. Callahan, could you advise the court your connection with the case, please? I'm the agency case manager for the home and for Jasper. Okay, thank you. All right, and then I show on my screen uh, by phone, uh, area code 210, last four digits, 415. Uh, if you're on that phone, could you identify yourself for the court, please? Yes, this is Lisa J. Lopez. I'm the assigned LPS worker in San Antonio for Jasper. Okay, I'm sorry. What was your last name, ma'am? Yes, sir. It's uh, Lopez, L-O-P-E-Z. Okay, thank you. All right, the uh, court will note uh, for the record it does not appear that Ms. Uh, Ramby is participating in the hearing today. Mr. Gra uh, Graves has indicated no objection to the court uh, proceeding with the hearing in his absence, if she was not present, uh, just to update the court on the status of the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the hearing today. And, uh, I'm gonna ask Ms. Ziders, Mr. Nanny, uh, Ms. Uh, Braden, uh, if each of you could raise your right hands, please. Each of you telling me swear or affirm any testimony you give today before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, happy God. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Keenum, if you're ready. Ms. Ziders, would you please state your name for the record? Brenda Ziders. Let's begin, first of all, with um, the last time we were in court, we talked about. Uh, looking at family for Mr. Nanny and specifically um, his mother, paternal grandmother, and why she was excluded. Can you uh, first tell the court why she was not looked at for placement at the time of removal? Yes, um, I did go back and look at the investigation report and um, Ms. Brewer was excluded from placement at that time due to the condition of her home, um, it being um, unsanitary, lots of pets in the home. I have since spoke with Ms. Brewer um, and also visited the home as well. Um, she has made some um, improvements and changes to the home. She is still in the process of doing so. Um, and so um, at this time we are um, getting the needed information to um, run her backgrounds and get the paperwork to her to proceed with the home study. In addition, uh, Mr. Nanny has identified his sister, Tyler Brewer and Charlie Holiday as possible placements. Where's the department at looking at those individuals? <clears throat> I have actually met um, Tyler. She was um, there visiting her mother whenever I visited the home, um, and so um, I have scheduled to meet and visit with her, have a phone visit with her. Um, I've yet to be able to reach his other sister, um, Charlie. Um, and normally the process is we look at 
uh, we do one home study at a time or at least one per side. So is the goal at this time to proceed with the paternal grandmother, Ms. Brewer? Yes. And then continue working on getting information from Ms. Tyler Brewer? Yes. And then continue looking at um, locating Charlie Holiday and getting backup information. Correct. Yes, because Miss Nanny, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss um, Brewer, Sheila Brewer, did list um, her two daughters as um, frequent visitors to the home. So they would, um, I would need their background or their information to run backgrounds on them as well as um, visitors to the home. And have since our last hearing, has Miss Ramby provided names of any additional individuals on her side of the family to look into? Um, she has not provided any additional information. I have not had any contact with Miss Ramby. I have attempted to call, text, email, and I have not gotten any response. So I am unsure if Miss um, Ramby actually has um, any. Uh, working communication, cell phone, um, email at this time. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Let's talk about Jasper right now. Um, he's currently placed in the San Antonio area. Is that correct? Yes. And he is able to participate even for his young age. He's able to participate in outside activities. Is that correct? Yes. And what are those outside activities and family style activities he's able to participate in? Um, the family does outings. The foster family does outings weekly. They try to do something during the week, um, go to the park. Um, they have a, a, um, access to obviously community parks, but they also do some amusement parks uh, that are, there's one particular that it's geared towards children with special needs. They're in the San Antonio area that they visit um, due to um, some of the things for the, the older sibling of Jasper that he's in the home with Anna. And um, so they go to the library, they attend church. So there's lots of activities that the family engages in. They try to do one outing during the week and then one outing on the weekend, weather permitting and those sorts of things. And <clears throat> Um, Jasper does have medical conditions and does have special needs. Is that correct? Um, he is not necessarily um, uh, given the diagnosis of special needs or uh, primary medical needs. He has been released from the cardiologist most recently. Um, there was some concerns with that. He did have a, an appointment and was um, released. So he does not have any um, pending heart condition or um, issues that the doctors are concerned about at this time. Well, let's go back. He was born uh, congenital syphilis, is that correct? Yes, and he is still being followed for that. Okay, um, and he does actually still have a heart murmur is my understanding, but he's been released uh, just to be monitored for his age, is that correct? Correct, they do feel like that it will, um, the, the hole, there's a small hole and they do feel like that it will, um, it's, will, I guess, close in time um, due to him being, you know, an infant. That's not abnormal. Um, he did fail a um, hearing test in one of his ears and he was supposed to have an auditory brainstem response uh, testing. Um, and that was on July the 26th. Do you know whether or not they were able to complete that on that date? Yes, they were. And what are the results? Um, I, I would have to look. I do not know if the results um, have been um, given um, yet. Okay. Um, so the, the test was performed, but we don't know if it's been analyzed and we've received the results back to know what the next steps are. Correct. And then finally, he does have his next pediatrician appointment on August the 5th. Yes, he has a six-month checkup. As far as Ms. Ramby, um, you've been provided, uh, previously been provided um, a cell phone number for her and a email address for her. Is that correct? Correct. 
And um, you testified earlier that you haven't talked to her or had any contact in her uh, for a while. Do you know how long it's been since you've had contact with her? Um, I did not get a chance to look back at my emails um, or text messages, but it has been since we had the last court hearing. Um, so um, at the least, it's been about three weeks. And you have, but you have been following up, sending to, uh, attempting to contact her through her cell phone. Yes. And you have attempted or sent messages through her, uh, the, the email address she provided, and you've copied that to her attorney and myself, letting her know, these are the things I need you to do and reach out to me. Yes, yes. And attempting to um, send her to drug test, um, see if there's any other um, updates on any other services as well. And I have not, um, she did not complete the, the drug screen um, in July, um, nor have I had any um, follow-up information on any additional services that she has um, completed. Uh, when we had our hearing on whether or not we would have, have aggravated circumstances, she was living in a home on Waco Street. You were updated. She's no longer living at, uh, at Waco Street. Correct. She did let me know that she and her friend had a falling out and she was no longer staying there. But she's <laughs> never provided you with a new address of where she's living. Correct. Um, and she's not provided you with any evidence of any other services that she's completed since we've had that aggravated services hearing. Correct. Now you did note in your report that the mom had been having visits. Is she having visits or is she not? I was confused. She did have um, several initial visits, but I have not been able to have you know, have any response contact with her in order to get anything um, scheduled. Um, we had um, spoke about um, doing one um, virtual uh, visit, FaceTime perhaps, something like that, a video conference um, once a month and then once a month in person, but we have not been able to get a hold of uh, Ms. Ramby in order to get anything scheduled. And historically, when she was staying in touch, she would request pictures of Jasper and things like that. And she hasn't done that, at least in the last three weeks. Correct. Let's talk about um, Mr. Nanny and his progress. Um, uh, do you know where he's currently living? Yes, I do know where he is currently living. You've not been able to see the home at this time, and why is that? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When I had attempted to um, schedule a visit with Mr. Nanny, um, he reported that he was ill and um, did not want to have, obviously, visitors in the home so that he would not be um, contagious or that I would get anything from him. Um, and then um, the second time that I attempted to see him at home, he was at work. Um, I, he did provide me with the address to his um, job site location. And I did um, attempt to see him there um, at the job site location. And when I went there, um, he, was, he was not there either. So I guess we missed each other in passing. Um, and at that point, uh, Mr. Nanny, um, told me today, I spoke to him this morning and he told me that his phone um, was um, out of service um, for several days. And so um, he was not responding to emails and or text messages or taking calls um, at that time um, either. And that and was last week. And you actually have an appointment with Mr. Nanny to meet with him in person coming up. I do. He, Mr. Nanny um, is going to come to the office and meet with me later this week. He would like to um, complete um, the um, indigency form to request a court appointed attorney. Um, and so we will do that in the office and um, I'll help Mr. Nanny with that. And then also um, get Mr. Nanny to sign his family plan of service. He has verbally agreed um, to, and um, so that we can get that filed as well and um, see 
where he is on completing some additional um, services and get him the rest of the information that he may need in order to proceed with um, ADAC assessment, parenting and things of that nature. At this time, has <laughs> he provide, I, I saw he provided you a check to show that he, his ability to have employment. Um, yes. you, you have information of him having a place to live, but you've not been able to evaluate it. Um, he is visiting his child. Um, are there other services that he's completed or what services do you need Mr. Nanny to complete for us to consider being able to place his child back with him? Um, Mr. Nanny does have some pending criminal charges. Um, he has reported that he does have an upcoming um, court hearing on those. Some of those things keep getting reset. Um, and then um, Mr. Nanny uh, needs to um, go to drug screen compliance and um, submit to drug testing. Um, he reports that he did not receive my message um, in July uh, due to his phone being turned off. And so um, we're gonna, he has um, agreed to go to drug screen compliance today um, to complete a drug screen. And then uh, Mr. Nanny will need to um, attend some parenting classes and I'll make sure that Mr. Nanny has all of that needed information for the Pregnancy Help Center, and then um, also complete an ADAC assessment. And follow any recommendations. Correct. Pass the witness. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Um, Ms. Smith, any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Siders, regarding um, Jasper, um, does the department have any concerns with where Jasper's placed right now? Absolutely not. Jasper's doing very well. And how long has he been placed with the Bradens? Um, he has been with the Bradens. Um, I want to give you the specific date. Give me just a second. Um, he has been with the Bradens since May 27th. Okay. And um, <laughs> they're able to care and provide for all of Jasper's medical needs? Yes, they are able to meet all of his needs and um, he is placed with his um, older sister, Anna, as well. And does Jasper appear to be bonded with the Bradens and his older sister, Anna? Yes, um, the uh, foster mom sends me um, frequent updates, um, pictures and activities that they participate in um, and how much he loves uh, being with his sister and just watching her. He's very um, enamored by his older sister. Um, okay. Have the Braden started the adoption licensing process for Jasper? Um, they, they are, um, a licensed home, um, for, uh, the Ramby children. That is their desire. Okay. Um, does the department have concern, um, about Jasper's emotional and physical well-being if he's removed from their care, considering the bonding and the amount of time he's been there? Um, that would definitely be a concern um, that, that he would be moved um, from a, a home that he is bonded with individuals, um, caretakers, and his sibling as well. Okay. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Siders. <clears throat> thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Keenum. Any other questions for this witness or other witnesses? The only other thing I would ask, Ms. Siders, what is the current permanency plan? Um, the current permanency plan um, is uh, the primary permanency goal is relative fictive kin adoption, and then the concurrent permanency goal is unrelated adoption. And that was um, recently um, changed at our five-month permanency conference that was held on July the 15th. Pass the witness. And thank you. Ms. Smith, do you have any other witnesses or matters you want to address? No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nanny, uh, any uh, questions you have for Ms. Siders about her testimony or anything you'd like the court to know about your position in the case? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. Uh, I think Ms. Siders is going to visit with you today. I was, I've told you in the past, in any litigation, you have a right to retain a lawyer to represent you. Uh, I mean, you can go hire a lawyer if you want one. 
Uh, you can also make a request for a court appointed lawyer by filing an affidavit of vengeance form in the Tomerian County District Clerk. Ms. Siders may be able to help you with that if you desire to do that. If the court determines you do not have sufficient assets or income to hire a lawyer on your own, a court can appoint a lawyer for you at that time. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the court is also required to notify any parent in this type of case that because of the nature of these proceedings, your parental custodial rights and duties to your child may be subject to restriction or even termination, and your progress in any court orders or plan service will be reviewed at future hearings in this case. Right. Um, I say, Ms. Braden, did you have anything you'd like the court to know about how the child's doing or anything you need? Um, I did want to state that his hearing test actually did uh, get rescheduled to next Tuesday. Um, I apologize. I, I didn't want to interrupt. I wasn't sure if that was appropriate. Um, but it is scheduled for next Tuesday. It will be done before his well child check, which is next Thursday. And they said they would give us the results immediately um, at that appointment. Okay. So I'll forward that thank to Ms. Theater as soon as it's done. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for all that you and your family are doing for this child while it's going on. I appreciate it. Right, the uh, court will continue the department is temporary managing and servitor and continue the uh, child and current placement at this time. All other orders remain in place. Uh, next turning in the case right now is set November 16, 2021 at nine. That's a permanency hearing and pretrial. The trial is set January 5th, 2022 at 11 a.m. Dismissal day is uh, February 14th, 